This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2023 Cruise Light Platinum model number 19DBXL. Okay, so this is not a, a floor plan video, it's a how to video. So I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work. Okay, alrighty. So, <coughs> excuse me, we have a small kitchen out here. Uh, now, in order to work the griddle, this is your, your LP hose here. You have to plug this into the quick connect, which is right here, okay? And then the under, other end of this, the male end, plugs in right here to this quick connect. And then you light it. So you have to plug it into the LP system before you can use it, okay? Now, it also has a coiled spray hose. You can see there's the hose here. There's a quick connect right here. You can see that. The handset is probably here. Yeah. You get your handset here. Okay. Now you have a drop down uh, stabilizer jacks, which just basically means they drop, they freely drop down till they hit the ground and then you start cranking them. So you don't have to crank them all the way down or all the way up. You just have to snug them into place, okay? Um, you have a power awning with LED strip, outside speakers. Uh, this is a TV signal out right here. And this is the power for it if you wanted to put a TV there. Okay, let's see what else we have here. So you have your, this um, three quarter inch crank here, which you use on the stabilizers. Okay. Then you have this smaller crank right here. The smaller crank is for the power tongue jack. So if this was ever to fail for whatever reason, you can pull this plug out of the top, put that crank on there and you can crank it manually to get yourself out of trouble. So you always have that option. So you'll always get it hits and unhits no matter what. Then you have the rest of your hitch, which we'll show you how this works when you pick up. It's a Husky Centerline weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control. It's a good one, so um, we'll give you the instructions on how to, how to snap it up and down and everything you need to know about it. Okay. <clears throat> Deep cycle marine battery, two LP tanks which are full, of course your power tongue jack, and this is the kill switch for your battery right here. The battery is on, but if you ever want to shut it off for whatever reason, you can turn it off right there. Okay. So this is your, your um, dump hose right here, and this is a an adapter to adapt your 30 down to a 20 amp uh, shore cord. Okay. As we move down, that's your furnace uh, vent there. City water connection is right here. This is the most common way to get water to the trailer. City water hookup. Um, so you have that. Now, if you're happen if you're camping someplace where they don't have city water. You can pre-fill your city water, or excuse me, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here, take the water with you, and then you can use the onboard pump to pump the water. So all the plumbing will, even if you don't have city water, all the plumbing will work as though you have city water, even though you'll be pumping it from the tank. So you always, with the two, the two options, you'll always have water. Nine times out of ten, like I said, you'll have city water, but on those rare occasions where you don't, you can take the water with you. This is a vent for the range hood. There's a fan and a range hood over, over your uh, stove there. So right now you can see this is flapping, flapping freely. That's the way you want it when you're venting to the outside. You, want the, you can snap that closed, but if, you, uh, if you're gonna be venting, you wanna pop it open so it flaps freely. Okay, this is your uh, 30 foot, 30 amp cord, shore cord. And I showed you we have to give you the adapter for it to adapt it down so you can plug it in in your driveway, whatever. All right. 
these are your uh, this is your gray tank right here this one over here is your black tank black tank is toilet water and waste gray tank is sink and shower water these are low point drains here okay cable and satellite through to the inside of the trailer now after you dump your black tank you can leave it hooked up to the dump station um, leave your black tank valve open you can come back here with the hose at the dump station you can put your your water hose at the dump station right on here like it says on this sticker make sure the black tank valve is open you turn on the water it'll spray out the inside of your black tank flush it out clean off the sensor so you get, get a good reading that sort of thing so if there's a working um, a working hose at the at the dump station always take advantage of that okay um, that's your black tank flush this is your where that that sprayer hooks up right here right this is your water heater Let's see if I can get this open here with one hand so this works on uh, both LP and uh, and electricity so it has a, a heating element that's behind this cover right here right then there's the gas burner the switches are inside so I'll show you the switches when we get in there the other thing to know is that this is where you drain it right here it takes an inch and a sixteen six point socket um, when you drain it which you inevitably will no one likes to leave uh, um, water in the tank let's say you're, you're camp you go camping in the spring and you're not going to go camping again till the fall well you're going to drain the tank so the water doesn't get all skunky so um, when you do that make sure you f make sure you fill the water tank on the, the the hot water tank on the back of the water heater here make sure you fill it before you turn it on because if you run it without water in it you can damage the heating element and that sort of thing so never run it without water in it okay so this housing tells us it's pre-wired for a backup camera. It's a Furion backup camera kit, so if you're interested, you can either install it yourself or have that installed. We do carry them here. Um, also, we're looking up the manufacturer states that you should inspect your roof every, every 60, 90 days. You're going to make sure there's no damage by... Uh, low branches to any of the roofing material or attachments you're going to make sure that there's no cracking or separation at any of the the sealant where uh, water could leak through you just you can't see what's happening up there so you got to go up there and look otherwise you'll never know until it's too late so it should be part of your regular maintenance to uh, inspect that roof okay so let's go inside So, this, uh, while we're looking this way, this has a Murphy bed on it, right? So, this, this couch here jackknives flat, and then the Murphy bed, you'll pull these latches here, and then you'll, this latch, there's the latch that locks it in the down position. You'll drop it down, and uh, you're all set. Just make sure when you're putting it back up, you don't just grab it. And yank on it. You make sure you pull this lever or this 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 latch out, and uh, so it, so it frees up, and you can just stow it up in the right position. Put the couch back into the sitting position, and you're all set. It's a great thing because you you get the best of both worlds. You you, uh, you get more space, like it's a larger trailer because you're not using the you know a third of the floor space for the bed, but um, so you can reclaim the space during the day, and then at night you just fold the couch flat fold the bed down and you, you're, you're in business so okay this is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector right here you can see it's glowing green it should always be glowing green if not get it serviced it's obviously very important this is your emergency window here you just push it all the way through you go all the way through with it then you would grab a hold of the red tab and pull the screen out and you can escape in an emergency So right here, this is your this is this is your solar controller right here. You can't really see what's happening now because see how it's flashing F U L and um, the buttons will not respond. 
That's telling us not that there's something wrong with it. It's telling us that there's no more room for storage in the battery. It's been sitting out and it's been plugged in so your battery's totally topped off. So when it senses that, it just shuts the panel down uh, until the until the amp amperage in your battery drops. And when it senses that, it'll go right back to the normal normal configuration. The the thing to remember is this the button you're going to use is the upper right hand button. You can't see very well from down here from the angle I've got. But you just keep pushing it. You push it the first time and it'll tell you how many DC amps are in the system. It'll be like 13.5 DC amps. Push it again and it'll tell you how it'll tell you the amp gain from the from the from the sunlight. So uh, let's say it's a sunny day and you're getting 5.6 amps. Uh, that, from the sunlight and that those amps are being store, stored in your battery so you're gaining 6.5 whatever it'll change it'll go down to 1.2 or on a cloudy day it'll be like 0.2 you know it, it just depends on the the weather conditions outside the pos position that the uh, campers parked in is it parked in the shade or in the wide open is it uh is it um you know what time of day is it all that all that stuff matters so um, if you push it again, it'll tell you amp hours. So keep in mind, FUL and flashing means that there's the battery's totally charged up. There's no more, more room for uh, any electric electricity to store in the battery. So let's shut the panel down. All right, this is a a dimmer switch, as you can see. Okay, um, this is your awning right here, your power awning. Never leave the awning out unattended. If you're not going to be at the campsite, always roll it in or else it'll get damaged by the weather. Um, your water pump is right here. Remember I, the water pump's used to pump water out of the fresh water tank if you don't have city water. This pump's also used to winterize the trailer. Turn your water heater on gas. It was right there. Okay. Um, Remember, don't run the water here without gas in the tank. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I've been out in the heat too long today. Without water in the tank. Okay. It's either that or, uh, or old age is creeping on me. Either way. Um, I wanted to check something back here. Let's look. Yeah. So, I failed to show you this out here. So, you see this rocker switch right here? On and off. That, that switch controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover here. So right now that he heating element is off. It's good to keep it like that because um, if you're not, not going to be using the trailer, you know, heating out water and using it, there's no reason to uh, keep it running. But um, the bottom line is, like I said, you can't run it without water in the tank. If you do that, it'll burn out this element pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. So. Um, you always want this off unless there's water in the tank, and that's where you operate the electrical heating element. The gas burner is operated by the switch I showed you inside the trailer, okay? All right. Just wanted to come back here because I realized I forgot that. Okay. So. Your keys will be hanging right on this faucet right here. Um, that's your furnace right there. The thermostat is right here. So this you set, you just hit the bottom bar, which is the mode button to light it up. You can scroll through it right now. We're on, we're on cooling, which is air conditioning. You also go to heat, which is propane heat. The propane furnace runs and fan, which is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. It just circulates air. So three different furnace, fan, and air conditioning, three different options. This GFCI, keep in mind that every plug in the trailer is wired to a GFCI. Even if you have a regular plug, like this one here, it's still wired through that GFCI. So if you're using something here and it pops, you're going to reset it in the bathroom or wherever. Same with the one outside. Okay. So... Microwave works like any other microwave. This is the range hood vent I told you about. You have a light here, and then you have the fan itself. Always open that little baffle on the outside when you're going to be venting to the outside. I don't know if he's got the gas turned on here, so we'll, I'll talk it through it either way. This is the sparker here. The, all the way to the left is the sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark 
the burners in the in the oven. So you go to light. Now let me see. This might be the new style. I have to always check because they're shipping them. All right, so he just has it off right now. The reason I was, what I was checking was that some, on some of the newer models, you have to depress this. After you select a flame, you have to depress it, depress this and hold it into, into place um, for it to light, but this one you don't have to. It's just a matter of turning the gas on. Now, never, never leave this open when you're traveling. You always want it shut. Your, when it comes to your... Um, Winterizing the trailer and drawing antifreeze into the system, that's all done behind this panel right here. So keep in mind, it's two screws holding it in place. This device here is your power converter. This converts AC to DC power. So when you're plugged into shore power, first of all, it, all, first of all, it, it detects the type of battery you have automatically. Right. Then you have a control panel here for AC current, like you'd have in your box in your house. So. Um, you got got uh, 110 AC circuit breakers here, and they're all labeled right next to it, just like you'd have at home. But then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side, so you got 12 volt fuses, um, and they're all labeled here. So that's where your 12 volt power comes from. Also, this is a battery tender, so it'll sense, as long as you're plugged into shore power, it's going to sense how much energy your battery up front needs and has. We know that it's totally charged up right now because of, uh, because of looking at the... Um, the solar controller, but um, it'll always sense how much energy you, your battery has and it'll send as many amps necessary to keep it charged up, right? That's when you're plugged in. Now when you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicle's alternator is going to be charging the battery. And then, uh, of course, um, your solar panel is going to be charging it as it can, depending on the conditions outside, okay? So this is, uh, this is the... the um, uh, this device here uh, it uses, uh, you have your AC circuit breakers, 110 AC, just like you'd have at home in a control panel. Then it converts power to 12 volt DC on this side. It's got 12 volt um, DC uh, fuses there. And uh, it also senses how much energy is in your battery out front and keeps it charged. Okay. Please bear with me. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. So you have your. Um, your um, bunks here. The way the way you access your water heater is underneath this panel here. You pull it up and you can access the valves on the back of the water heater. Okay. And we have a an RV toilet, travel tra trailer toilet, which is as with all travel trailer travel trailer toilets, it sits right over a black tank. So um, you have a flush pedal right here. All right. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water, and then you're going to come in here. You're going to um, put a dose of chemical right in the bowl, and then you're going to step on the pedal and hold it down long enough to put at least at least a gallon of water along with the chemical into the black tank below. Um, you can use you you can use more than a gallon of water, but don't use less. Okay, if you don't put water and chemical in it, that's considered using it dry, and what'll happen? It'll get clogged up for one thing, and the second thing is it'll it'll stink bad. I mean, really bad, and uh, so you don't want to clog it up and and uh, and uh, do that sort of thing. So always make sure you have water and chemical in it. Um, otherwise, like I said, it's considered using it dry, and you'll have all kinds of problems. All right. Shower works like any other shower, of course. We have an exhaust fan up there. Another emergency window back here works the same as the other one. Okay. Your sound right here. Um, this, uh, let me look around and see if there's a, what we have here. Yeah, here's the remote for it right here. Right here. So this has FM radio, no AM, just FM radio. It has Bluetooth, so you can stream from your phone to your tablet. It has um, a USB drive right here, so you can put all your music, turn it, uh, convert them to MP3s, and take a, take them all with you on a on a USB drive, and uh, take your entire record collection with you, or whatever you want to take. 
Uh, this is an HDMI in. So let's say you get you hook up a TV over here. There's a backer for it. If you hook up a TV and you wanted to show videos and you had a little portable Blu-ray player, for example, you can plug it right into here if you want to. Uh, it has two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. Okay. No AM radio. So you have that. Um, let's see what else. Like I said, like I started to say, this is where your your TV would hang. You put a, a bracket here and there's a backer. There's a hole for the wires. And uh, you just work your way through with the wires to the other side where you put them where you want them to. That, that green glowing light up there, that tells you, that's where you're, you hook up your coax. It's telling you that your digital antenna is on, which is what you want. This King Connect little cover plate there is telling you that if you're interested in getting better Wi-Fi with a router, you can look at King Connect. There's a web address there. You can go there and look at the, pro the different uh, products for pre-wired uh, uh, Wi-Fi so you can um, you could look at the various kits. The kit you would want would have an antenna on the outside and a router on the inside. And you're, you could just get much better public Wi-Fi. It's like a signal booster for your family. And then all your, your family's phones, just like at home, would, would hook up to the, to the router itself. So that's just a, another pre-wired option. Just like there's a backup camera pre-wired, there's also a pre-wired for better, better um, Wi-Fi if you're interested. Okay. All right. So I think that covers it. Let me look around as I'm moving through here. Okay. Your refrigerator is 12 volt DC refrigerator. So it's a compressor refrigerator, but it's 12 volt DC compressor. Your your refrigerator home would be a 110 AC compressor. This is 12 volt DC compressor. Okay. Okay. So I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please remember what I said about inspecting the roof every 60 to 90 days. That's important. Also, this, this is in trailers in camping mode. The, the antifreeze has been purged from the system. The water heater is, um, is, uh, uh, is in the correct, the valves are in the correct position for camping. So that's all set. The antifreeze has been purged from the system, replaced with water. So you're all set till, till you winterize in the fall, okay? Um, other than that, we'll go through it with you when you pick up and we'll show you how the hitch works and any other questions you have and then we'll go from there, okay? Thank you.